the whole story, your story, but the story of, you know, veterans being deported, I think, I mean, you fall on two sides of that. If you're, if you're an American, you fall on two sides of that. Either you're like, well, the law is the law, yada, yada, yada. Or you're like, no, these people served here. They gave their blood. They were willing to die for, you know, our, a little piece, you know, what we uh, U.S. born people get just by virtue of being born here. They're willing to die for that. And then to be de- to be deported is uh, fucked up, man. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. That's what I think. You know, that's why that was one of the reasons that I, I never gave up. I, I grew up in Echo Park, so I consider myself an American. And, and to me, that was the greatest betrayal was, uh, because also they said... Uh, can you come a little closer? A little closer so I can hear you better? There you go. But yeah, and move up, move up your screen. I don't know if we, what you're on. Is I can't, it? I can't oh. move it. That's why I have to get the big chair. <laughs> okay. Because that's fine. it's that's one fine. of those uh, one piece uh, computers. It's, it's in place. There you so, go. So, yeah, man. Uh, um, it's uh, one of those things that America is, uh, they always say, oh, well, they need to assimilate to our culture. Uh, I guess that's another argument with that we dispel because we're as, as assimilated as we get, man. We, you know, we become part of the American fabric. We grew up entitled the way that uh, America, American-born people are uh, are entitled, but they don't know it. Right. I didn't know I was an entitled uh, uh, immigrant until I got deported. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, I'm an American. <laughs> and they're like, no, you're not. I'm like, oh, well. I must have missed, I missed the memo because... This fucking USMC fucking tattoo say I am, right? <laughs> right, that's what I said. I'm like, and, and I only served two years in the Marines. That's another thing I get. Oh, well, you're not a real Marine because you only served two years. I'm like, really? How many days is a Marine that you serve? You know, Let's see you get through boot camp. <laughs> exactly. You know, you tell me that after you've gone through what I did. Yeah. But also, what people don't understand is that uh, systemic racism has been... Uh, Part of my life, since I was little, I was born to a, a, a single mother, you know, the, the other woman. I, I grew up a bastard. Uh, same here, same here. Low income. So right off the bat, I was way behind on the social economic lines and ladder. I was in a fucking hole that I was supposed to never crawl out of. But thank God, and, you know, I have a little bit of uh, intelligence that I figured that out uh, as, as soon as my anger led me, which was at around my 30s. That's when I'm like, wait a minute. It's not that uh, I'm a bad person or that I, I keep on doing the wrong thing. No, it's just that the system is lined up against us to fail. And when they see a, a young Latino or a, a young Black person or a young Native American uh, Stepping out of that system, they're like, oh, no, let's bring them back in. What can we get them on? If you're a, 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 a Native American, right away, what is it that they throw at you? Oh, that you're a drunk and you can't get out of uh, being in the reservation, that you want a free titty all the all the way. And if you're black, it's like some more of the same. Oh, they're, they, they don't want to get off the food stamps. They don't want to get off the welfare. Or if you're Latino, you're coming here to steal jobs. Steal? Exactly. You can't steal no job. You, you're only taking jobs that nobody's taking. You can't steal a job. And that's what it is, bro. We all fall victim of the system. Yeah. But we don't figure it out, on, you know, because we're so busy just trying to survive. Right. And, and um, that's why I also think that there's so little community involvement in the Latino side because we're so busy just trying to survive and unfortunately, most of them are not uh, educated to the point that they understand they're being manipulated by a system. Why well, bring it up all the time? I mean, Latinos, you know, we'll stick to Latinos, but it goes for black people. It goes for all working people, poor people. They keep us too busy to study, to read up, to read the yeah. news, to know what's what, to even care, to have energy to care, right? Because you got to right. worry about bills. You got kids. You got chores. You got mandados. You got all this shit. And then to what? To care about uh, deported veterans or to care about the planet or to care about what's going on in Mexico or Honduras or Puerto Rico. You don't have the energy. You don't got the time, you know, and it's that's by design. They do that by design to keep us 
docile and controlled. Yep, that's what it is, man. And so tell me your story, man. I mean, I know you're born in Juarez, but I mean, let's start from the beginning. I mean, you don't you. If you're like my wife, she doesn't remember anything of Juarez when she was a kid. Well, I had um, I grew up a little bit different. I guess that's also helped uh, under my uh, perspective on life and the way that I see um, American culture and Mexico culture. Because uh, ironically, when my mom came to the States, I was a little kid and she brought me over. But I was always, I'm the youngest one of four. I actually was five of us, but my oldest brother died when he was a kid. And then my, I got three older sisters. How and, did he die, oh, if you don't mind me asking, man? I'm sorry? If, how, how did he die, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, shit, I was a baby, man. I don't... Oh, I you don't remember? Uh, he was... You don't, uh, they don't, nobody talks about it? No, that's one of those things that nobody yeah. talks about. Man. Yeah. And since they don't want to talk about it, I don't want to yeah, ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. You learn very young to, like, whatever the people don't want to talk about, you don't talk about. Right. And so I grew up like that with uh, three older sisters. And uh, when I would be in, in L.A., I would be telling my mom I miss my sisters and I would go back to Mexico. And then when I was in Mexico, I'm like, I miss my mom. So I would go back to L.A. And, and I had that back and forth until I was around... 12, 13 years old. Oh, wow. When the violence in, in Juarez really started picking up in the late 80s. And, and um, that's when I told my mom, I'm like, Mom, I I can't grow up in this violence anymore. You know, it's, I'd rather be in American violence in, in L.A. <laughs> right. also, and, and, and understand this. I'd rather go back to growing up in L.A. where the gang culture was at its birth in the 80s than to stay in Mexico for the violence that was uh, exploding at that time. So that gives you a little bit of a perspective of I was in a situation where there's a, a shit situation and a shit storm situation. So right. I, I decided to, you know what, Mexico is too corrupt, too much violence. In L.A., at least the cops are going to beat you up. And uh, at the time, they weren't shooting that much. They were just beating up. But uh, that's all that happened. In Mexico, you would get shot. You would be put into unmarked vehicles, and nobody knew if you were going to come back. And and the ironic part is that now in America, they're fucking doing that. Yeah. And but um. I mean, yeah, yeah I had a I, last week. I had uh, this uh, anthropologist. He works. At, he's a professor at UCLA, and he what he does is he studies like the migrants crossing the border through through Arizona, through the 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 Camino del Diablo, right? Right. And uh, we were talking about like, yeah, Americans don't really understand the desperation. They're like, oh, you know, I get that it's, you know, I get that it's dangerous there, but it's dangerous in Chicago. I get that it's poor there, but there are poor people in Alabama. No, no. In Juarez, it's different. Like, you know, there's not going to be 30,000 disappeared people in, in, a, in the United States, you know, like there is in fucking and Mexico. Cares. And nobody cares. Everybody goes about their business. Yeah. And so you're you're going back and forth until you're 13, right? And so you decide to go right. to mom, I got to I got to get out of here. That's yeah. my my wife came in 90, 1990 from Juarez cuz that's her dad says the same thing. The 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 it was always violent in Juarez, right? Juarez is like notorious, but right around 90, 1990, shit started to really get just too dangerous to live and especially for a kid. And that's that's when uh we just had to to LA and I just never went back yeah. because um, I, I started uh, I finished high school in the Marines but uh, I always saw America as my country I would only see Mexico like my baby's country you know I didn't, I, because I was never there long I would always go back to LA and so what made you join the Marines? I love the you know even <laughs> Today, I, I love America. That's that's the way I see it, kind of. Um, I see it as a, it's a social contract. What America has, does with immigrants, it's a social contract. You know, like well, we're talking about, you come in here, if you're going to be working and you're going to be doing everything the way that it's supposed to be done in America, you're welcome to come in and make the country greater. So, unfortunately... It's, it's great on paper, but in, in practice and in reality, it's a different fucking matter. 
they don't say that uh, when, oh, yeah, you're welcome to come in and, and work for uh, a better future. They don't say that that uh, back-breaking work is only going to be minimum wage of 875 And then, you know, <laughs> out of that, you got to pay a, a 70% of that into rent. So it's just on the, it created uh, the, the, the economic system that we have now has created a, a legal uh, servitude. Oh, That's yeah. perfect, man. And uh, and not unless a uh, few people they understand it, and and that's when you gotta kind of step out of the system and and do your own thing. And you know, <laughs> that's what we're trying to do right now. But uh, also, I think that it's a responsibility of those of us that understand the system of how it works. It's our responsibility to try to at least grab a one of those uh, people that are enslaved by the system. And, hey, man, wake up and and you. Come to my hand, and you with your other hand, you grab somebody else, and let's pull each other out of this system, man, because that's the only way to get it done. And um, there's some people that uh, they do wake up to the way the system is, but instead of uh, you know grabbing a hold of you and pulling somebody else, they let go of you and they start grabbing whatever the fuck they can for themselves. <laughs> yeah, and that's there's the a lot of that too. We're fighting. There's a lot of that too. I mean, I should mention that my brother's a marine. Uh, he served in Iraq from 2008. Well, he was only there for, for six months, but he, he, was, he, was in, uh, he was in North Carolina, Camp Lejeune. Right. And uh, I had a former guest on like two weeks ago. He was a Marine for eight years. Again, he was born in um, Durango, and he said the same thing. I joined the Marines because, you know, my, you know my, this country gave my family an opportunity, and I don't know how to pay it back other than, you know, here, here's my body. Use me here. I'll, I'll protect you. I will defend the right and the security and the blessings that we have in this country. Um, but so tell me, I mean, like you, you joined the Marines. Did you still didn't know you were undocumented at all? You didn't know uh, anything about it? I, was, um, I had a green card, you know, the, my mom got an amnesty on the 1986. Uh, oh, under Reagan, right? By Reagan. So right away after that, I had papers. But even before that, when I was still a, a, a teenager, I would go uh, back and forth because it was different back then. You would just go to the border and as you're crossing, you tell the agent, hey, I'm American. And if they, you know, if, if they doubted you, they will stop you. They would ask you questions. What were you born? What school did you go to? Right. And shit like that. But that was it. After that, you know, be on your merry way, man. We'll see you later. And... Um, so when I joined the Marines, I already had my legal resident alien status and everything. But um, that's another thing that people misunderstand about me. Uh, I'm, as, uh, <laughs> I'm as deadly as any Marine out there, except that um, a lot of Marines have this uh, bloodthirst in them. I don't. I joined because I, I'm, I'm a protector. I'm a lover, man. I'm not a fighter. But I also understand that sometimes to protect the ones you love, you got to fight. Yeah. And that's the reason that I joined the Marines, because I wanted to be one of those Marines that uh, protected uh, my neighborhood. That yeah. all, I believe that. Yeah, I mean, my my uh, my dad's army, my mom's navy, she she had a green, she still has her green card. And she there was some stuff that she had a, a less than honorable discharge, a long story. And that kind of left a sour taste in her mouth. You know, uh, she loves America, but, you know, maybe not so much to the government. Right. Um and uh, so you you only went for two years. What happened? Um, I was uh, I was having a hard time with uh, with my command. My command at the time, I don't know how it is now in the Marines and uh, I can't speak for it, anything other than my experience in the Marines. But um, I was being uh, targeted a little bit for green brown mm -hmm. and um, and growing up uh, with a chip on your shoulder, you're always looking, having to protect yourself from everybody else. Uh, being called a wetback is something that I always uh, led my up, uh, you know, led me up real quick. And that was one of the things that I had going in the Marines, and and uh, it wasn't good. I was always fighting. The thing is that uh, my commander was white. And he wouldn't do anything personally. He would tell his little uh, sergeants and corporal to come mess with me. And um, when I would beat them up, 
I was out of control. But when there would be me up, everything was cool. And that's always one of the, that's the first time that I got exposed to the way that the system is rigged against you. But I was too young, too angry, and too fucking dumb to understand that at the time. But uh, because also, like I said, when I will beat them up, right away they will bring me up on charges or they will make some up. And me being the proud Marine that I was, I'm like, you know what? I beat your ass up, whatever you want to do, fine. I'll sign your little paper, but I made you my bitch. You know, that, that was right. the mentality at the time. But now... Especially when you come from the streets. I mean, if you come from the streets... And, you know, you, maybe you've never even seen a, you've never had a white man talk to you in any kind of way. And then you go to the Marines and somebody's like, you know, having to my brother, too. You know, you fucking spick, blah, blah, blah. They're, they try to break you down so that, you know, in the heat of battle, they can just tell you to go there. And you don't even think you just you're a dog. You know, you're a devil dog. You just go. Right. And uh, but, yeah, if you come from the streets, somebody calls you out your name. You know, fuck, fuck this uniform, fuck you know my name, whatever. I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna handle this because all yeah. I have is my self respect. You know, you're gonna that's respect I, me. That's uh, that was pretty much it, man. And and so when they, I would beat them up, and they would write me up on charges. I would sign whatever. I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, when uh, they would beat me up, and I would wake up, you know, knocked out. I'm like, dang, what happened? Everybody's back to work. So what do I do? All right, fuck, well, get back to work. But um. Those are the things that uh, part of the system that exposes when you're paying attention. Unfortunately, like I said, I was too young to be paying attention then. Okay, and so um, you, what what happened with in in New in New Mexico? You got caught with like what two pounds of, of weed? I mean, a lot of these a lot of deported veterans get caught with like just weed, you know, which is ridiculous, right. you know, especially now where weed is illegal, you know. Is weed legal in New, Me- New Mexico? It will be pretty soon, right? It'll be legal everywhere. Well, I live in Nevada. Yeah, it's legal over here. I'm in Vegas, too. I'm, in, I'm on the other side of Henderson. I got to come visit you pretty soon yeah, when all this shit's... Sure. Uh... So uh, the thing with that... <laughs> look, I'm, here we go. <laughs> I'm different than most deported veterans. Uh, and, and me being here in the States, undocumented, should tell you something about me. I'm not like the hundreds of deported veterans that stayed back there and they're crying little bitches that, oh, you know. There's a shelter up. in like TJ, right? To Tijuana, yeah, there's a I'm shelter not, in Juarez. I, I met with some of them. And I'm like, hey, you guys are uh, Marines, you servants men like me, then let's go, you know? And they're like, oh no, it's too dangerous. I'm like, what the fuck you think being a Marine was, you know? Was, <laughs> right? I don't know. I, that logic doesn't, uh, I don't understand it. So when they were like, oh, it's too dangerous, I'm like, whatever, man, I'm going. My family's over there. That's where I need to be. And so I came over here. And it's just um, the mentality that I have as a, as a Marine is uh, is different than, than most people. I I am a dangerous person. But, uh, but you made me dangerous. Society, you wanted me to be a Marine. And you taught me certain things that uh, the regular folks shouldn't fucking know. Yeah. And... Uh, but also because you scramble my brain, when I break down and I do have my breakdowns and think out of my my big scare me. What was that? That I'm not the type of person that I when I have mental breakdowns, I don't think I'm hurting myself. You know, I'm you think I'm hurting somebody else. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't say that. Well, that's, well, that's what they say. Depression is Supre- They say depression is is anger directed inward. So you could either be depressed, you could ha- you can have that violence towards yourself, or you could just turn it around to the world, right? And I like myself, man. Right. I, I like hanging out with me. My I'm wife, not the I, problem. I'm right. not the problem. That's what I, one thing is that I'm very honest, and uh, I respect people's uh, uh, opinions and points of view as well. But I expect my opinions and points of view to be respected as right. well, whether you agree with them or you don't. There's no need for name calling or any of that. And uh, and sometimes, you know, just pointing out the facts over and over uh, upsets people. So that's when I'm like, OK, you know, there's not to talk about here anymore because people cannot see the, the reality of what things are. Like in my neighborhood, I'm surrounded by Trump supporters. Yeah. And, and yet they know I'm deported and they don't call the cops. Why not? 
<laughs> well, I saw in the local news you, you did a local news thing last year, and you, you you're Republican. They said you're proud conservative Republican. Uh, well, I my my views align more with the uh, conservative views, Republican views that from the '80s because fucking I can I don't understand Republicans now. Right. <laughs> I I believe in family. That used to be a, a, a family uh, it was Republican uh, issue, you know. And and but also that this is where I think then when I say family values, I, I mean a, a a a home with love and structure, whether it's a, a you know same sex parents or fucking I don't know, take the rainbow I guess nowadays, you know. Yeah. But Good family, a family brother that somebody that cares enough for you that says, you know what, I'm gonna teach you everything I know about the world and how to come up better on it. It doesn't have to be, you know, blood related or even the same sex. That, that to me, it has zero concern. Yeah. My concern is that there's got to be at least two people, let's put it that way, two people to raise a child properly, to give them two different points of view. I that, feel the same way. And I think, I mean, you, you, we, we, know, we feel that way because we were raised by single parents, right? I, and so, you know, we, we know that a lot of our fucked up shit comes from that, right? Like that we got one side and we had only one person's energy helping raise us. Man, if there was somebody else, man, if my dad would have stayed, who would I have become, right? What kind of tools would I have had? Like, um, I just recently went to Washington and um, and something as simple, I, I met a colonel that let me borrow his RV, which I actually... Uh, broke down. I'm sorry. I need to fix it. <laughs> but this man, dude, he he sat down with me, and we just had a a, a game of chess. I never had a a father figure sit down with me and and have a game of chess. And and I don't know. That's those are things that are deep to me that they still hurt. You know, I put behind me. But um, to think about it, that I waited 46 years to have a a chess match with an adult that would talk to me less as a child. as a mentor and um, something that's it's sad, but it's, it's necessary. I don't want a child on the streets to grow up and, and then at four years old say, oh, fuck, man, I barely had a chess game with somebody that cares. Yeah. That sucks. And I don't... I don't want that. That's why I try to make it better every day. Yeah, my my, I actually have my suegro living here with us too, and uh, he had a fucking terrible life. They deported him. He was away from his family for fourteen years. We fixed my, my you know, my my wife fixed her own papers. Then she became a citizen. Petitioned for him. Now he's a citizen. No, now he's a uh, he has a green card, and he's living with me. And you know, he's sixty one, and it's the first time I've lived with. A man, and, you know, I didn't like when my when my mom had boyfriends. You know, I would be like, man, fuck you, you ain't my daddy. Like, I didn't want no men in the house, right? Although now looking back, it would have done me a lot of good. But now, you know, he's a he's a carpenter, a great a master builder, and he's teaching me simple shit, right? How to fucking saw, how to fucking do this, how to fucking do that. And I feel embarrassed, you know, because it's like I've never had anybody show me like. You know, how, if you don't have a, a father figure at, as a kid, where are you going to learn this shit, right? Where are you going to learn it? And that's exactly my point, man. Like, uh, me growing up, uh, up until I joined the Marines, everything I learned was from the from the hustlers on the street, you know? Right. So, what the fuck you want me to do? Hustle. That's why when I got caught with marijuana in New Mexico, it was about 30 pounds. You know, I was, I was trying Damn, to... Damn, uh, 30 pounds? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what what's the market value on that? Uh that was a I think they were going around a five hundred dollars a pound. Wow. I would get a hundred out of each one. So And I mean it's you 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 push that because again, not only deported they America treats veterans like shit, man. It's insane. Not, it's insane. Like oh. what you would think that oh shit like everybody you know everybody who who's here the people who went to war who wore the uniform man when you come back you want a house done you want to go to school done you want a job we'll find you a fucking job tell us what you can do we'll find you a fucking job they don't do that at all and then you got a and then you have 
you know, PTSD and you, you have these skills that are, are just specific to war. I mean, you know, they shoot character, but you have these skills that are specific to war. It's like the Hurt Locker when he's going to the fucking uh, grocery store and he's staring at all the fucking cereal. And he's thinking back about Iraq. He's like, what the, what the fuck am I doing here? Right. And then, and you know, that's one of the things uh, that uh, when I got released from the Marines, I didn't get, um, I always put it to people this way. Think about this. I was trained for war for six months straight, day and night, every fucking day, every day. And, and the whole mentality of that uh, brainwashing was to make you a killing machine. And uh, I think they were pretty successful at it. Now, if they drilled that shit into my head for six months, every day, every fucking hour of the day, how long should I have taken them to break me down back into a normal person, back into society? They didn't. They just like, okay, you're out. Get out of here. Boom, you're out. And now Crazy. I have all this locked and loaded fucking mentality that that I can't do anything with it. I go ask for a job and I can't even get a job. I used to work on Mattel doing the potato head because tri- doing the trimming on the potato head because I couldn't get a job doing anything else. Yeah. And then, the, like you said, it when I don't know about that movie, but if he was staring at uh, the cereal, I was just fucking staring at the potato head and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Right. You know? But... Uh, what I was doing there is that I had a child at home that I had to feed. Yeah. So for the minimum wage and I had, I was working that job graveyard because it paid a quarter extra yeah. graveyard because of, my mom did, my, my mom did graveyard for the same reason. It paid more than nobody wanted to take it. So it paid more. So, and that's another social trap that I didn't understand until, you know, until well, working I the had graveyard, a little bit of perspective, yeah. It separates you from like the rest of society because she would like sleep all day yeah. and then work at night, so she didn't have a life. She wasn't even part of the world. She was a ghost, man. We're a ghost, man, that, and that's what it was. And so it's, it's but um, also it's a, it's a blessing in, in disguise, you know, because going through through so much in, in this uh, system that is uh, uh, what governs our our conduct in America. And how rigged it is for Latinos and, and uh, other minorities, it does give you a perspective that you're blessed because you survive all that. And that's why, like, uh, now I'm still undocumented, and even though I got the pardon from the governor of New Mexico. You just so, got it, right? Like a couple, like a month ago or something like that, right? I got it in June. Oh, in June. But uh, now I really don't care if, if, if uh, they come and get me again. I'm not, you know, kick and scream and fight it, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna fight it that much, man. I'm, I'm a smart man. I, I got a college degree. I, I can probably make a little bit over a hundred thousand dollars on my house. So, let's go, man. Fucking Philippines and or somewhere cheap, you know, go to Merida or something. But you're still, you're still a patriot. I mean, so, so am I, right? I mean, I, you know. We're on the yeah, on not, opposite ends yeah. of, the, of the political spectrum, but I love this fucking country, right? I, I love it more than the people who's, who's, you know, those fucking Trump people who say that I don't love this country. I, exactly. I, I dare them. I, I dare them. To, uh, fucking, let's take the citizenship test right now. I'll fucking ace that motherfucker, and you guys right. will fail it because you guys don't know shit about this country. They don't. They don't. Um, but what was I going to – man, I got fired up. What was I going to say? Oh, man, I'll is, take America with me anywhere I go. It doesn't matter. I'll right. take parts with me. It, that's, I, man, I say that all the time. It's a fucking idea. America is an idea. It's an idea, right? It's values. It's set of principles. That's, a, that's the idea that I always thought America was, that we could be better together. It was always that to me, you know? It, yeah. it wasn't, oh, if, you know, if you're black and you got your black community behind you, you're going to do this. And if you're Latino and you got your Latino community, you're going to do this. To me, growing up, and I guess they have to do that. I grew up in Los Angeles, where everybody it didn't matter. Right. Everybody was on the same boat. Uh, same thing in Chicago, yeah. But at one comes up, we all came up, and we were happy. Like I remember, there was Mister Chang in the fucking. He was from the Philippines, no, from Vietnam, and he showed up. He had nothing, you know, and and, and the community hooked him up. Then they they made a, a little stand for him. That the, they cleaned out his plate. And got him started that way. And he he grew his business, and 
that was something that we were all happy for him. We would go show up and give us some fried rice, you know, and, and we knew that he did better because of the community. That was something that I was always really in my mind. I always and, I mean, and, and since we're all immigrants and we're all working class and we're all poor, when you see somebody, you know, the next person next door, no matter what the fuck race they are, what country they come from, when you see them succeeding, you're, that inspires you, man. And it, as a kid, you're not like, oh, well, he's Filipino. That's, that doesn't apply to me. No, he's a person. He's a man, just like I'm going to be one day, right? That's one of the things, man. I've never seen race. I, I, I really don't. And, um, and now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Some people might even call me racist sometimes because uh, I do say the stupid stereotypes, you know, like... Um, I always think about this joke that they told me in the Marines. Is it stereotypical? Yes. Is it insulting? Probably. But is it funny? Yeah, yeah. it's fucking funny. So I remember my sergeant, uh, and this is the first time I ever heard that joke. He's like, hey, Lopez, how come the Mexico don't win any gold at the Olympics? And I'm like, I don't know, sergeant. Why doesn't Mexico win any gold at the Olympics? You know, he's like, because anybody that can run, jump, or swim is already a cross. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's messed up, but yeah. uh, it's funny. It is and uh, stereotypical, yeah. So that's another thing that I have. You gotta uh, be able to know how. You gotta be able to know how to laugh at yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, like you just—it's so Nothing healthy. So serious. Everything's so personal nowadays. Right. Everybody wants offended. To I'm offended. Oh, you can't yeah. say that word. Oh, you can't. That's mean. You're, you know, I I just got in trouble for saying, you know, like, you know, if you're really really fat. I was talking about people who have cankles who are super fat, right? And I'm like, you need to get your shit together, right? That's that means there's something in your mind, right? That you know, your mind and your body are the same oh, thing. And people, the, man, man, people got mad at me. You can't say that, you know, you fat. You know, I'm fat. You can't judge me. I'm like, if you can't, if we can't fat shame, it's what? over. It's <laughs> over. No more mama jokes, man. Pack <laughs> it in. And I, th- I, I think that America has become way too fucking sensitive and way too heavily armed. So, Ooh. you know, like, um, like I was mentioned, my Trump neighbors and everything. And I tell them, like, so you guys feel scared? Uh, you think I'm going to do something? And they're like, well, no, because of the riots going on and all this. I'm like, I'm like, do you guys realize that I'm the only one in the fucking block without a gun? And I'm the only you know, Latino in the area? And they're like, what are you trying to get at? I'm like, motherfucker, that you're the danger. It's yeah. not you're the danger. Yeah. So it, it's funny to me, man, that they're heavily armed and easily offended. That's a dangerous combination. That's true. I mean, the, the other dangerous combination that you said in that in that local that news story that you did, you was like, you know, you're, you America's deporting these veterans, right, that have skills, that know how to use weapons, all kinds of weapons, and hand-to-hand combat training. You said, you're going to fucking deport somebody who's going to be like, you know what, fuck America, fuck this government, I'm joining fucking the Sinaloas, I'm joining the fucking Zetas, I'm fucking joining whatever, I'm starting my own fucking cartel, and with all these deported veterans that we're going to fucking really fuck with America, you know, really take back America. And, uh, you're, you know, there's, you're saying, oh, you're lucky that I love America, man. I mean, talk about that. Talk, talk about like, yeah. I mean, there's, there's somebody you, you can't push people, you can't push people into a corner, and then what do you expect them to do when they're pushed into a corner? Right. And that's the other, uh, that's the other part of the, the equation I'm here because uh, I grew up in LA during the first, uh, well, not the first riots, but the riots of '93, '92, and uh, I, I actually walked on those riots because you know I was. I was a teenager. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It was something that I had never seen or experienced. And I needed to know. I'm on that type of person that I'm a curious person. I need to know. Yeah. But having watched that and, and lived through that, and now we fast forward to 2020 when it's happening again, after the George Floyd, um, I understood that uh, what happened out of the riots in, in L.A., it was that the community was uh, burned down to the ground and the social reforms that were supposed to happen for the police department to change never came into effect. Not None really uh, substance ever came out of it. What came out of it was that uh, the community was so razzled by, 
by the looting and the burning that uh, there was a max exodus of people out of the area that eventually got bought up again and, you know, gentrified nowadays. So that's the thing that I try to tell people this time around. Don't burn down your fucking community, man. Just don't. If I were a community leader, I would not have anybody out on the streets past dark. That's it. Because the only thing that happens at dark is fucking bad stuff. It doesn't matter if it starts good. It always ends bad. People, use your mind, use your head. If you're going to protest, get your ass up at 6 a.m. and be at the governor's office at 8 a.m. And yeah. don't leave that door until 4 p.m. when he leaves. But at 4 p.m., go home. Watch yourself on the evening news. Because if you're going to be on the street, they're going to shoot you. Yeah. I mean, and you... And- you know, I'm, I'm my my mom's from Honduras, and you know I've been to Honduras and uh, Mexico too, right? There's this whole this, this the culture is if you're out in the street after dark, you're only up to no good. You're only up to no good. There's nothing good that happens after dark in the street, and it's and two like, you know, I get I get the anger, man. You know that's why you know I I the looting and the burning down. I get the anger, but. You're only you're only proving them right. Whatever all the shit that they say about us that we're animals, that we can't we're dangerous, that they gotta keep us controlled in ghettos. And then we act like animals. And I and get that it were I tell them when I argue with these people, uh, because I was actually at the uh, in Washington for the BLM march, that's the reason I went to Washington. But I do tell them, I'm like, guys, you guys are screaming and hollering about this and that that nobody listens to us. And uh, I'm trying to tell you that I'm here because I understand your pain. If if there's somebody that can be mad at the system and the government, it's you. but I'm still not rioting, I'm still not looting, and I'm still not attacking police because that's not what my civil disobedience is about. My civil disobedience is about an ideal of injustice, that that ideal of injustice cannot be made whole by burning a fucking building, by beating up a cop. That idea that I have in my head does not get uh, fulfilled or or gets uh, across to the people that I wanted to come across if I were to engage in that type of behavior. So, like I said, uh, yeah, let, let's be civil disobedient in, in, uh, in a good way. Let's get in good trouble, you know? But, uh, trouble. but let's not get in bad trouble because that's... <laughs> That's when your ideology is going to split from mine. And my number one ideology is to protect the country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And if you are attacking police just because, you know, they're fucking pigs, uh, no, they're not. They're human beings that decided to do a job. They might be poorly trained. That's another thing. That's you the know, other if, thing, yeah. If you're a, one of those cops that's always reaching for your gun because you're scared of going walk in my neighborhood, Maybe you shouldn't be a cop, man. Well, Maybe. Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan talks about like you know they would their fights would uh, police officers would come to his uh, where, where he does MMA right, and they don't know anything about fighting at all. They don't know how to throw a punch. They don't know how to wrestle. So that person's gonna fucking reach for their gun right away, you know. And he, yeah. you know, uh, what is it? Jo- I don't know if you know Jocko Wilco, the the seal. He says like you know police should be training. They should be doing mandatory training constantly, constantly, like in like in the Marines. Yeah. You don't just do boot camp and that's it. You're constantly retraining, yeah. constantly drilling, constantly. And police don't do that. I think they do maybe once a year, maybe. And that's what I tell everybody. I'm like, listen, I'm I'm a 46 year old man, out of shape, but I had some training when I was young. I wouldn't fuck with you. I mean, I, I'm seeing those shoulders. I wouldn't fuck with you. <laughs> and I ain't scared of people, you know. Even like. Growing up in the ghetto as well, I had right. so many guns pulled on me. I have never panicked, man. You pull that knife on me, I'm like, all right, you know, here we go. But uh, if I'm just a freak Joe, if if I can do that, I'm pretty damn sure that a cop that gets paid to do this can get better training than that and not be scared of a guy with a knife or even a gun. You know, that's, that's up to every individual at that point. But... Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I also because I'm a little bit stupid, and I I believe maybe Jesus got my back, you know. And, and that's another thing that I I, I believe that uh, 
It doesn't matter what I do, where I go. When baby Jesus says it's time to go, it's time to go, man. I could have been uh, in, in combat or in, in the war or something like that. Or right now I could fall down and crack my head on the, on the toilet. It's, yeah. To me, it's uh, everybody like so. <laughs> and that's when they go into the argument of where is it free will or is it destiny? I'm like, why can't it be a little bit of both, a man? Bit, oh, it, man. Why isn't it your destiny, you know, uh, Jesus or your Lord, my Lord, whatever you want to think about it. But what if an, an, a greater entity than ourselves said, you have this much of your playroom and those are the years that you're going to live. Hold on, you're breaking up. I'm just saying that maybe the destiny is that you're predetermined to live a certain amount of years. But uh, he doesn't uh, say how you're going to live those years. You just fill in the blank, you know? Yeah. And um, <laughs> I think uh, that's the way I think about There's this great line in uh, The Last Samurai. I'm, I'm fucking... Uh... <laughs> I'm quoting all these movies, you know. I'm a fucking '80s kid, right? So that's all I know is movies. <laughs> but uh, you know, the 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 samurai asked Tom Cruise. He goes, you know, do you think a man can change his fate? And uh, Tom Cruise says, I think a man does what he can until his fate is revealed to him. Right. You know, and that's exactly what it is, right? You don't know what you're destined to do. You just every day you just got to make good decisions, do your best, and then. When you're dying, then you'll know, oh, that, that was my fate. But only on your deathbed will you know. And, and, and that's a, a, a really good way of saying it as well, because um, I have lived a, a very full life at 46 years old. Uh, I've been on both sides of the law. And um, mainly what changed me was being a father. When I had my daughter, that's when my perspective changed, maybe because I was... Uh, maybe a little bit more responsible now because I didn't want my daughters to grow up the way I did. And I tried to actively change that. So uh, it gave me a better perspective and, and I tried to make the right decisions after that. And, and you know, now that I'm older and, and most of my decisions in my last 20 years have been good decisions. So I see that it wasn't always uh, because bad stuff still happened to me. Yeah. And, it has. It was out of And my it will happen. It'll yeah. always happen. Yeah, that's just the world, mind. right? Yes, sir. And um, so, I mean, we, we kind of got off your story because, you know, we're talking about life here. This is great. Um, so you, you pled guilty to the to the 30 pounds because they were going to let you off, right? But I guess you when you when you plead guilty, that puts you – that takes away your – Residency, you're on, now you're on deportation, right? Right. It makes you deportable, but they didn't tell me that. Right. And, um, they actually they told me the contrary. They said that if I uh, did the probation time and, and everything was squared away, that it was gonna be erased off my record and it was gonna be like nothing happened. So that was in 2000, and like I mentioned, I, after that I finished my college degree. Would you? Would you? Where'd you go? What'd you study? I went to. Uh, El Paso uh, uh, Western Technical College, and I studied for um, for computer science. I went to work at Intel, but I didn't like it. It was too boring, and uh, <laughs> I started working construction, and I did good there. I really enjoyed the physical activity of being a, la a laborer, and um, that's one of the joys that I have found in life, too, you know, because I didn't not having a father with a trade that to show you when you're a little right. kid, you start fixing a car or, or building something. I didn't have that. I I kind of found that joy in my mid twenties. I'm like, hey man, building stuff is a lot uh, more fun than than breaking it. And that's when my mentality started changing about uh, destroying stuff and and build. You know, again, and now that I'm older, I I do enjoy building a lot more than. I don't even think of destroying things anymore. And just a few people here and there, but. Well, that's another philosophy, right? They say, you know, in life, you're either building or you're destroying. And yeah. you, it's up to you what, what you decide to do. You can either be a force that's creating or a force that's destructive, you know? Right. Uh, so you went to like Costa Rica. And then when you came back, they're like, you can't come back. You're. Right. <laughs> when I was coming back from Costa Rica, they stopped me at the airport. 
and they're like, oh, it's, it's this you, Cedar Lopez. I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's what it says on my IDs, you know? And, and they're like, well, it said that you're a criminal here and that, uh, that you're a threat to the nation and you're not allowed to come back in. Wow. How the hell am I a threat to the nation? I'm a Marine, you know, there's yeah. nothing I love more. I had three wives. I only got one country. <laughs> they didn't like that joke. I thought it was pretty funny. My wife don't like it either. <laughs> I like it. It's what it is, baby. I, I changed my mind about women three times, but never in America. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's what she told me, that I was a threat to the nation. And I'm like, well, I guess uh, we're going to have to fight it. And uh, I got me a lawyer here locally, but uh, turned out to be a crook. So he took the money and didn't show up to the court. There's a lot of that, huh? That's a lot of that, man. And, 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 you, and you know English. There's, you know, there's people who don't know any English. So they find they find somebody who claims to be a lawyer and gave me $5,000. And then, boom, they're gone. Oh, disappeared, man. And that's, and that's what I saw when I was locked up because they had me locked up for four months while I was fighting it. And that's another thing that I'm from the system that you find the the craziness and, and, and the flaws in the system because uh, they had me locked up because they didn't want me to uh, flee the country. I'm like, bro. Well, you're, de you're deported, right? <laughs> I'm trying to come home, you know? That's what I'm trying to do. And uh, they didn't get that. Uh, and so to me, that's one of those things that is kind of weird. How the hell you going to keep me locked up because you say that uh, I'm going to leave the country when I, that's what you're charging me with. Right. Going back home. That's like being kicked out of a bar and they keep you in the room for fucking hours. Right. Like, kick me out, bro. <laughs> exactly. You're not welcome in the bar. Get out. Stay you here for five welcome. hours. <laughs> yeah, so it says that. It's been interesting. The last eight years fighting this uh, system, um, I'm an electrician and then and I had to learn to be somewhat of a street lawyer to fix whatever I needed to fix because I didn't have money. So yeah, I mean, and everybody, everybody, you know, watching this knows your name. Um, remembers that scene when you're at the what was it, the governor's office, and you're talking to that assistant, and that assistant man was giving you some bullshit answers. Bull, like just like saying, you know, when, you know when people talk but they don't say anything, like oh right. well. And you're telling her the story, like I want to speak to the governor right now. Well, yeah, well, we'll we'll listen and we'll hear. Like you're like, what? No, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I mean, what were you feeling at that moment? What were you feeling? This person's not just bullshitting you. Well, that's the that's the other part of the system that it has become very clear and apparent to me. The system protects itself. Like damn, dude. it's got it's a beautiful system to to once you're a part of it. Uh, the one pulling the strings. You're protected, but if you're one of those that is getting their uh, strings pulled, it's hard to lo loosen them up. Um, and what do I mean by that? Um, I called that office countless times, man. I I was I remember I was calling like every other day for like two three months, to the point that they were like, "We know you're calling. We know you're calling. We know who you are." I'm like, "Yeah, I know. You know, you're gonna listen to me because." Uh, being undocumented and, and not having a voice, it sucks, man. Because all they got to do is just ignore you. Because in reality, you don't matter. And uh, um, that That's was... That's the crazy thing about it, being a deported veteran is that you don't exist to the U.S. government. And you really don't exist to the Mexican government, right? Because you are you served in a foreign army. Yeah, a, so they're like, fuck you. You're to the country, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of hard. And... and and the other thing with me is um, I was raised in America. I'm, I'm, and I was raised a little hustler. So I know how to hustle anything. And I could have hustled uh, a different personality, you know, go to the, go to the cemetery and pick somebody's age around my age mm. and, and, and take that identity and become that person and have a normal fucking life. If you can say normal, but, uh, my whole point was that no, I want to be recognized as Cesar Lopez. I made mistakes, yeah, but I've done a lot of good for the community as well, for the country, and uh, and you're gonna recognize me for who I am, you know, for a man that's been uh, stepped on by the system, and uh, a man that stands up for his rights because that's what you taught me as a country that if 
anyone stepped on you, even if that someone is your own country, your duty as an American is to fucking get up and push them back and be like, hey, well, yeah, it's not, it's not the country, it's the government, right? Like, there, there's that one line, you know, a patriot must always be ready to defend his country against its government. Yeah. And so you love the country. You have a beef with the with its government, right? The people running it. Right. The people running it are not America. The people running our fucking politicians, professionals, suits. Right. You know, um, did you did you cross the border? Like, did you illegally? I mean, that that's where that you. So you got pardoned. Right. So that's out of the way. But now you're deportable because you crossed again illegally. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. But uh, that's one of the things that I'm <laughs> I created myself another problem by coming back. <laughs> but, hey, you know, um, everything that I've done is it's been a, a conscious decision. Right. Like when I crossed that border, I knew that I was, you know, I could go to jail. I could die. How did you cross? Where'd you cross? Did you do the whole Pollero crossed, thing? Uh, I crossed through uh, Tecate, through the mountains there. It would, took me uh, three days and four nights. By yourself? Yeah. Damn. And uh, I mean, tell me, can, can you tell me about that? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you want to bring up. I know, I know, crossings are fucking hard, but beyond my belief, right? beyond my imagination. But tell me a little bit about that, man. Well, mira, one of the things that they said that uh, it's easy to cross that border. I'm a, I'm a U.S. Marine, and I almost died crossing that border. And uh, also, I wasn't equipped for it. I, I just uh, decided to cross one day, and and I was not prepared for it. But uh, but it's 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 an incredibly militarized border. I mean, it's got ground sensors. It's got infrared. It's got uh, spotlights. It's got a retinal detention. Uh, uh, and power. now Border Patrols, a lot of them are ex-military themselves, man. And they're, they're trained for that as well. You know, they get... But I um, also think that my desire to be with my family and be free is greater than any paid uh, employee will ever have, you know, they were after a paycheck. I was after my life. That's true. So I knew that when it came down to that, I was going to beat them on that. But um, it's just, um, it was one of the hardest experiences for me. And uh, my respects to anybody that makes that trek, man. If, if you can go through that and still be, hey, can I get a job? I'm like, bro, here you go, man. Whatever you want to do because yeah. you have enough uh a strength and, and personality and character. Character. Given the, the right tools, you can do something productive for my society. So, yeah, man. Uh, but it's it's a different mentality that we got going on in America right now. That's crazy. I mean, um, so, I mean, how, how, how is your life now, man? How are you holding up with COVID? How, what, 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 uh, what's your campaign like? What's your day-to-day -day life like? Well, um, mainly I stay inside my house, so, you know. I you're I, hiding out. I mean, because they're they're looking for you, right? I mean, they could yeah, deport you at any I moment. I wouldn't call it hiding out because I've got a big ass mural outside my house. <laughs> oh, that's outside your house. I saw that. Uh, you were in you were in the paper like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that was outside your house. Yeah, that's outside my house. So, and like <laughs> everybody knows where I'm at. Right. Come and get me, man. Yeah. But, uh, no, I mean everybody. Everybody I told that when you were coming on the show, man. You know, men, women, they're like they were so excited that I was gonna talk to you because, I mean, again, like deporting veterans is like the worst thing that America, any country, can do. You, you earned know. your place here. You earned. You are an American. Hey, if if you if you committed a crime, like the like the former Marine that I talked to two weeks ago, they're like. Those Marines, they'd rather do their time here in America, however many, how many years, months, whatever, and then just stay here, you know? But, like, to be deported is fucked up, man. Yeah, it's something crazy that we don't understand. And uh, it's, we paid our, uh, our, our crime to society, and then we get deported after that, too. So we always said that it's double punishment, but... Uh, uh, the widows don't see it that way. They're like, oh, it's not double jeopardy. I'm like, bro, the fucking second punishment is worse than the crime, you know, than the original punishment for the first crime. So right. it's one of those things. Somebody right. must be outside my house. Hold on. Hello. All right. My dog, Carnell. Hello. 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 Yeah, I got, I got a dog that barks at every fucking thing. Barks at the wind. 
I got fucking crybaby dogs, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry. Where were we? Oh no, we're just talking about you know the the, the deported veterans, man. You guys earned your your space here, but you know widows are like the law is the law. You know sometimes the law is unjust. Sometimes right. the law is unjust in certain areas, certain situations. And that's what I'm trying to say with uh with uh, this deported veteran movement. You know I've been fighting for eight years. And my argument has always been to get deported is the worst thing that you can do to a, to a patriot. That, that's it. No matter what, uh, uh, charged with uh, corrupting the minds of young uh, Greeks. Socrates, right? Yeah. Socrates. So his fucking punishment was, hey, leave the country and, you know, you'll be all right. And he's like, no. They're like, well, if you don't leave the country, we're going to kill you. Yeah. And he's like, hey, I'd rather die than, uh, you know, get out, uh, get outside of my country. So that's kind of like the same way I feel that uh, the ideology of military men that are uh, in their youth, they were willing to give their life for the country that they, that they were uh, serving, then really you, you just can't, you can't remove them from the country that they, they were willing to give their lives. It just makes no sense at all. It, to me, that is, um, that is a, a, a stab at the heart of America. Yeah. Because what created America? A bunch of immigrant soldiers, because they weren't born in America. Right. They, they said, you know what? The British uh, uh, king is being a tyrant, and, and that's no way of living. We need to come together as people and stand up against that oppression. That was immigrant soldiers that created a nation. Our nation and and the, well, it's always and it's always immigrant soldiers. World War One, exactly. World War Two, Vietnam. So, it was immigrants there too. So how is it that uh, now we're gonna be stabbing those same soldiers in the heart? And be like, oh, get out of my country! You you don't belong here. After we already willing to die for the country, it just makes no sense. I and uh, it's offensive to me in so many ways as a person as a, a member of this society, as a, a person, uh, as a citizen being governed by this system, I'm ashamed of it. And I need to change it for me to have a, a peace of mind and me go about my regular everyday life of being an electrician. I need America to recognize that deporting veterans is against our American values and, and period, that's it. You fix that. And then we can go back to arguing over all the other bullshit that we're arguing over right now. But mm -hmm. one thing that every American should be able to understand and get behind is that you cannot deport a person that was willing to give their life for you, especially all those people there. The, the ones that I, I, they take me off the most. It's all those people are like, oh, thank you for your service. I'm like, all right. Do you serve? No, but my daddy did or my brother did. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you. you. Your brother served. You yeah. didn't serve. You don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. And, and I know I'm going to get heat from this too, but the family members, sure. They, you know, they, if you're a kid of a military person, you got to uh, pick up and move from school to school, which is traumatic on its own. But you did not serve. Right. You did not get your face kicked in by sergeants. You did not stand at parade rest for four fucking hours. You yeah. didn't do any of those crazy fucking things. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, like, you, you know, like they, how they talk about how military wives, like, you know, oh, did she served too. No, she was on a base. She had, you know, she had food. She had everything provided for her. Yeah, she was worrying every day, but that's not the same as being fucking shot by a fucking terrorist. There's a difference being worried with a gun right here. Oh, shit, I'm gonna die. And uh, being at home, oh, I'm worried. I hope you don't die. It's a big fucking difference. Big man. fucking difference. Like I tell that to my wife, and, and she 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 gets mad. We argue over this. Yeah. Because even when I was locked up uh, at the detention center, uh, we argue that she like when you were locked up, I suffered too. I'm like, yeah, but you were fucking free to walk the goddamn street. So yeah. no, it's not the same fucking suffering, man. And yeah. that's another thing that people need to, to put themselves in check. If you see somebody that has been horribly wrong, 
by whatever. Don't come over and look, oh, I got it worse too, you know, I had this happen to me. Nah, man, the fuck you, get, get out of here. Yeah. At least recognize this person, uh, give them enough respect to understand their pain that they're going through and and validate that pain, you know? Be like, yeah. hey, I'm sorry you had to go through that, I feel your pain. That's it, stop, <laughs> and, and, and stop. Because uh, it's always like, oh, I, I understand what you're going through. And let me hug you, but let me tell you about what happened to me and how I got through it. Nah, yeah. man, shut the fuck up. Yeah. You should have stopped at the one that where I feel you and let me give you a hug. That's it. Because that person at that point and the, the, they're at in their mental status is that they just need to be told that it's gonna be all right. Once you get that person in a comfortable zone, that uh okay, I'm safe, I, I got this out of me. How do I rebuild? That's when they're themselves, they're gonna look up to you for help. Yeah. Don't offer your fucking help if they're not ready for it. If they're not asking for it, don't offer it. Yeah. No, I mean it's it's true. I mean, people people have this FOMO of like, you know, they wanna be metiche. It's like, well, I'm suffering too. No, just you know what? Just be like, I don't know what the fuck you I can't imagine what you've been through. Man, you know, whatever you fucking need. If you need me to get the fuck out of the way, I'll get the fuck out of the way. But everybody wants to be a metiche. Everybody wants to be seen helping, too, on social media. I don't know if you saw all these fucking people who, like, show themselves, like, doing all this help. And they just get in their fucking car and drive away. But, uh, man, it's been a fucking real honor talking to you, man. And and um, I know everybody is really pulling for you and then fucking and deported veterans. And, uh, what I mean, what's your hope now? I mean, are you waiting for somebody else to come in? Are you waiting maybe Trump gives you a pardon or something? No, nah, man, there's nothing and that's another thing. If you go into my webpage for years back before the election of 2016, I said he was going to win. Oh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I write and I wrote in uh, July 2016 that he's he's going to win. I mean, just the excitement. I've been to his ra- I went to a rally here in, H- in Henderson. Just people are just excited. And this year, this year, too, he's going to win. He's going to win. Nobody's uh, excited I- for Biden. Everybody's excited for Trump. I, I, I've been around the country and I I just came back from uh, from Washington. So I was on the road for a little bit over two weeks. And uh, yeah, man, I don't, uh, he, he might win. Let me, let me put it that way. Oh, of course. He might win. But the way I really see it, I don't think so. I think, you know who can fuck this up? Latinos. Yeah. As always. As always, I can fuck this up without even knowing, because and I try to warn the 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 Biden campaign about this. Be like, hey man, you guys ain't paying attention to Latinos. You you guys are all about the millennial this, the millennial that. Yeah. But what they don't understand is that those millennials are Latinos. Yeah. Don't get it fucking confused and don't get it twisted. The the heartbeat of that millennial bullshit that they say. And that's why I hate the term millennial when it comes down to political terms, because it's not millennials, it's Latinos, it's all those young kids that they got their fucking parents deported since 1996, and now they're all voting age. Those little kids that uh, you see in the pictures when they're taking away the parents and there's a little kid there, that little kid ain't no kid no more. He's a young adult and he's voting. And guess what he's going to be voting? The problem that Joe Biden has is that he was part of the administration that deported most of their parents. Yeah. And and Joe Biden needs to come up on front on that, be like, hey, you know what? I'm sorry this happened. Or, Let me fix it. I'm the, you know, I'm part to blame on this. Let me fix it this way. But um But he doesn't but, say uh, that. I mean, he's also part of the he's part of, in the nineties, he's part of those those crime and you know, uh what is it called? Tough on crime Democrats yeah, crime that made though. it they made it possible for for fucking green card holders to be deported for having a little bit of weed, which wasn't a uh, thing before. And that's the that's the thing where uh, the the black community was really heavily affected by that as well. But he threw a bone to the black community by picking Kamala Harris. Now, what is what is he thrown for Latinos? Right. Nothing. Nothing. We get completely ignored, and that's why right now. That you got those fucking YouTube uh, commercials for Trump and Latinos? Yeah. What do you think of the Latinos? Are? And like I said, 
most of our Latino view is Republican to begin with. Yeah. Family Look, values, uh, Catholic, you know, like, conservative. Like my dad, my dad is a, or my stepdad, he's a big time homophobe. Big time, dude. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I just think it's funny because uh, that's a, there's nothing I can say to make my dad understand that two men or two women loving each there's other. There's no way. Yeah. It's, it's their right. It's, 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 there's, they got as much right to that as, uh, as you know, when I was younger, I, I used to be a little man whore. Nobody judged me for that. Right. I'm like, you shouldn't judge me for that. You should have held me accountable to a higher standard. And 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 those are just double standards that we have as a community and, and as a culture. So uh, it's hard to change those things. And that's why it's uh, up to us to try to, uh, the ones that we, we're the, the bridge between the older uh, generation and, and these new millennial kids. Because they ain't got no real the role models. Uh, no. Too old are you? You look quite young. I'm 35. Sorry. You know, I'm called. I'm what they call an older millennial, but that means I I I remember the world before the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what you know. Uh, you are you will fall under that category that you uh, have the ability and understanding of maybe the older generation. Right. Because you grew up with it, and and the difference of the new generation growing up that all they know is. Computers. Yeah. There's a big gap between the the two different the, worlds, man. Rosie, the Riveter, and you know, fucking Amelia, computer hack. <laughs> there's there's a, a disconnect right there that uh, yeah, people like us, we understand it. Why? Because we grew up, grew up with those uh, work ethics and and social fabric, and we've seen it transform and develop into what it is the 21st century society, and uh, and. Those are our kids, like with me and my daughters. Uh, they're 23 and 25. And um, and I try not to be as hard on them as they were hard on me. But I still try to uh, instill some discipline and respect that the way it was uh, passed on to me by my mom, you know? Yeah. Because you, I mean, uh, you need structure. A kid needs structure. Even though they're going to fucking hate it and they're going to be like, oh, this, you're, 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 you're keeping my freedom. You need structure because you, especially when you're a kid, I mean, they're in their twenties now, but even now, kids in their—I know people in their twenties—and they act like how teenagers used to act. Yeah. Um, but like when you're young, you don't know shit. You don't know shit. I know you feel like you know everything. I remember being young and thinking I—I I remember being like sixteen and thinking, "Oh, I know everything. School can't teach me shit." And man, have I learned so much in the past fucking year. You know, I'm thirty-five now. The past fucking year, I've learned so much. You know, um, but. Uh, it's been, like I said, it's been really great talking to you. Let, let, let everybody know where they can find out about you and, and uh, the Deported Veterans Campaign. Well, uh, we do have, a, at the present moment, uh, we have a Unified U.S. Deported Veterans, uh, Las Vegas Barracks on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me on my personal, Cesar Nunez. And, uh, but we also starting a website, U.S. Uh, Deported Veterans.com. And uh, we're still building that, and we're trying to uh, organize a nonprofit so we can make this a little bit more um, the the impact that we're having with uh, legislation to make it faster and, and bigger, so it can bring all the deported veterans back. We're working on an NPO on that, and we're still working on a podcast so we can start transmitting uh, more information, stories of deported veterans, and uh, the podcast is on Podbean. I'm still figuring it out, and it's uh, under the name of U.S. Deported Veterans. Yeah, that, uh, dude, I, I bet that podcast is gonna be really popular because people re just, you know, especially when they first find out about it. You know, what? How many deported veterans are there? Like something like a thousand, something like that. Um, to be honest, there's never been a, a number that has been really tracked. The government doesn't track it. There's uh organizations out there that have. I don't know if they have the data. I've never seen it. But uh, ACLU did a report back in 2016, and they identified about uh, 280 deported veterans. Uh, me, myself, in eight years, I've been able to contact maybe about 150 of them. And uh, so I would estimate maybe between uh, 1,000, 2,000 at the max. Right. That I estimate. Those are the numbers that. And not only in Mexico, right? They're all over the world, right? Yeah, they they're all over the world. 
they're, they're in Africa, they're in uh, Canada, they're in, uh, I think there's a guy in New Zealand, there's one mm-hmm. guy in Kosovo. I, I hear recently there's a, a number of Iraqi veterans, you know, they, they, they were uh, put in the military service as interpreters uh, and they were given residency that way through the military, but then they got deported. Yeah, I heard uh, interpret Iraqi guy, right? I heard about that. Yeah, and, and that, that, I think that That's is fucked up. worse, man. Because then once you're once oh, you're seen the as guy sh- died. the guy died, he, he he didn't have a he was diabetic, and and he didn't get his uh, insulin. He died within fucking a week or a month of being deported. Yeah, I remember that. I'm like, what happened to that? I'm like, oh shit, he died on the street. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's, I mean. Let's let's hope that we can. I mean, the young generation they got a lot of energy, and it's up to us older heads to really point yeah. them in the right direction. Cause um, I mean, they have a lot of energy, and let's well, hope fucking we change this country from the bottom up. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you're here in Vegas, man. Uh, we're gonna we gotta a, get together, man. We gotta yeah, get together, well, making a sada or something. Uh, you come well, over my I, house. I love to analyze life with Scott. Yeah, hell yeah, come over my house. You know, my wife's dying to meet you. My suegro, we'll we'll fucking chat it up, man. I yeah. got to pull back here. We'll chill. Maybe this weekend. Let me know. Yeah. I'll, I'll hit you up. All right. We're yeah, on Facebook. Not, We're Facebook not. friends, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, man. Take it easy. I'll let you know when the when the po- the podcast will be up in a, uh, later today, the audio, and then the YouTube video will be up tomorrow morning, okay? And yeah. I'll send you that through uh, Facebook. I'll work on my lighting. Like I said, uh, my wife took down my studio, man. <laughs> You look and like you're in I, fucking I, Fallujah right now, man. I don't know. I didn't know what you were I, fucking. I, I, <laughs> got the guy at the back. Yeah, right. Oh, Shit. I thought, man, I, I, I thought I, you were being held hostage I, by fucking ISIS or something. <laughs> yeah, All right, man. man. I'll talk to you later, man. Been a yeah, pleasure. Bro.